we're very radical. Really threaten no one, only make the system more efficient. That was my point of anti-capitalist overload. This point first about uh, working class exploitation, all that complex, and so on and so on. Sorry, but uh, I definitely think that today it's much. First, let me say something. I. It's so easy, you know, to play the old card. No, the working class will arise against exploiters. But I take very seriously communism, and this is why. And for me, really, as you both emphasize, it should be a real movement, not as my good friend, but you is saying, an idea of communism, which then, as he concedes, from time to time, it explodes, like under Spartacus, Rosa Luxemburg, and so on. That's not enough. What interests me, to put it in very naive terms, is where today do we see, if not already, elements of communism, at least to be very brutal, but in the authentic Marxist sense, where do we see contradictions, antagonisms? This is for me the only real question, my God, for which it is clear that even in the long term it will not be possible for, no matter how reformed, democratic, multicultural, tolerant, liberal democratic capitalism will not be able to, not even, not resolve, but even keep in check these antagonisms. And in a very modest way, I try precisely, because I'm also like you, guided by the problem, let's not dream about abstract communism. Where do, see, do we see traces today? I claim ecology, I claim intellectual property, I claim, uh, I claim biogenetics, maybe the list is, I claim, of course, and this is for me crucial. Here, for example, I claim we should make a step further from Marx. Let's be very clear, for Marx, the ideal radical pure form of capitalism was one in which legal equality, we are all citizens, I know you start to, you want to stop the voice of truth and so on. <laughs> because there was just, okay. But the whole point of Marx is that legal equality, we are all free citizens, is the very form of how in the civil society as legal free subject we, uh, we assume being exploited and so on and so on. What they claim, it's a very commonsensical claim empirically, in the best British empiricism sense, is that obviously today's capitalism, this is for me the big meaning of things like, which I agree with you in a mystified way, are described by Agamben as Homo Sacer and all that, is that capitalism in order to function no longer can even afford this universal equality. It is receding from me, you have immigrants, you have le sans papier, you know what I mean? It has to create new and new de facto excluded second class citizens and so on and so on. Uh, that's, that's, that's again another, my God, I'm very practical here. Isn't this another side when we can, where we can start the struggle? As to Apple, you know, I don't agree respectfully with your example. Yes, I know. Uh, Apple is selling, uh, selling products, Microsoft also, you buy a disc and so on. But I claim, and it was proven that, again, the price of iPad is for me intellectual labor in what precise sense? In the sense that it, in the price of iPad, $400 and so on, the part of material production of it is practically negligible. It's not that, you know, Steve Jobs puts together the production costs and they say, let's screw it with extra exploitation when we arrive at the price. It's, it's, a totally different, it's a totally different logic. But again, what makes me a little bit depressed, and I will get boost from this, not a plot, I want to be finished as the Jesus Christ, <laughs> is that uh, it depresses me a little bit, you know, this rhetoric of no real religion is intellectual labor, blah, blah, nothing working class and so on. I don't see, I think, no, this is bad news, but no matter how long you will wait, you will not get a moment when this authentic working class, the way we knew it, will reappear and so on and so on. I think that working class then strikes are really, you know, like where do they fit the definition of working class? If there is an absolute human tragedy today, and 
typically those who speak all the time about human rights never mention it, is today's Congo. You cannot say this is working class. You know, all these excluded, exploited in different ways. The problem is to bring all of them together and stop them. <laughs> Surely that we all live in this we live in a society dominated by a suicidal dynamic. The dynamic which Marx analyzed as the law of value, the dynamic which structures production according to faster, 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 produce things, produce things that will sell, produce them as fast as possible, as quickly as possible. We know that we we produce and reproduce this dynamic every time we produce value. We know that we do produce this dynamic every time we perform abstract or alienated labor. The question is how can we break that dynamic? Because if we don't break it, then it is very likely that we will destroy humanity in a reasonably short time. Destroy humanity completely. Yeah. Okay. How can we break that dynamic? It seems to me that we cannot break that dynamic by calling Tories scum. It doesn't help. We know that they're scum. We know that the Labour <laughs> politicians are scum. Why waste our time saying it? We cannot do it either calling for socialist policies because any thing that a state does. States are forms of organization so integrated into the reproduction of capital that they cannot break that dynamic. And if you look at what's happening in Bolivia, Bolivia is not trying to break that dynamic. What is happening in Bolivia, what is happening in Venezuela is very exciting indeed. But the, re but the dynamic of capitalist production is being reproduced in both places. We cannot break that dynamic by thinking we are going to create communism in 50 years' time. Because we may not be around in 50 years' time. It is ridiculous. It is absurd. I'm sorry, Alex, your example of the museum was lovely. But it's really absurd to think of communism as a post-capitalist society someday. We cannot wait. break the dynamic, the only way we can break the dynamic is by refusing and by doing things in a different way, by create, producing in a different way, by creating other social relations. And if we think of that, then we can see that there are millions and millions of examples in the world of people dedicating their lives to doing just that. And sometimes these examples are pathetic. And sometimes these examples are so small that we can think we can just laugh at them. And sometimes we think of them as a tiny garden, but if you look at what's happened in Cuba, for example, there's been an explosion of tiny gardens by the people themselves, so that they now produce 60% of the food required for Havana within the city itself. And Alex says we need, if we want to build these cracks, if we want to expand these cracks, we need power. Yes, but we don't need their power, we need our power, we need our coming together. We need to do things in a different way and if we create a community garden of course we have problems because drug addicts go in, because drug pushers go in, because of course people will beat women and do we call the police then? Like hell we do. What do we do then? We don't call the police because if the Greek police are like the Greek police are supposed to be, if the Greek police are like the Mexican police, then they will abuse those women systematically. They will not solve the problem. Okay, we do not 
If we call in a power that is alien to us, then we are reproducing their power. What we need, of course, is forms of community control over behavior in the garden. Not our own police, but certainly our own forms of vigilance, our own forms of control of behavior. And that is, is exactly what the, 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 the gardens are. The garden is doing in Greece and many other community gardens. Okay, so we need power, but we need our own power, not a power that we can take, a real movement, communism. And that's what we have all said, the three of us, is communism is the real movement of anti-capitalist struggle. But that real movement of anti-capitalist struggle, where do we find it? Where do we find the antagonism? We don't have to look to intellectual property or, or to China or to Greece or to Mexico or to Venezuela. The antagonism of capitalism is part of our everyday lives and the struggle against capital is part of our everyday lives. And not only of people who come to Marxism in 2010, but it is part of the everyday life of all of us who live in capitalism. And that is why communism is a real possibility. It is a real possibility because it is a real actuality. And that's where we have to start from. Thank you.